Hi guys, welcome to the next section, Resilient Distributed Datasets. Now, we move on to the first video of this section that deals with creating RDDs. RDDs operate in parallel. This is the strongest advantage of working in Spark. Each transformation is executed in parallel for enormous increase in speed. The transformations to the dataset are lazy. This means that any transformation is only executed when an action on a dataset is called. This helps Spark to optimize the execution. For instance, let us consider the common steps that an analyst would normally do to get familiar with a dataset. The steps are, the first step is count the occurrence of distinct values in a certain column. Next step is to select those that start with an A. And the last step is to print the results to the screen. There are two ways to create an RDD in PySpark. The first way is to either dot paralyze a collection, or we reference a file located either locally or somewhere externally. We can download the dataset from this link. The record schema is explained in this document. We selected this dataset on purpose. The encoding of the records will help us to explain how to use UDFs to transform our data. For your convenience, we also host the file here. The last parameter in text file specifies the number of partitions the dataset is divided. A rule of thumb would be to break your dataset into two four partitions for each in our cluster. Spark can read from a multitude of file systems, local ones such as NTFS, FAT or Mac OS Extended, or distributed file systems such as HDFS, S3, Cassandra, among many others. Multiple data formats are supported such as text, Parquet, JSON, Hive tables, and data from relational databases can be read using a JDBC driver. Note that Spark can automatically work with compressed datasets. Depending on how the data is read, the object holding it will be represented slightly differently. The data read from a file is represented as map partitions RDD instead of parallel collection RDD when we dot parallelize a collection. Now, let's move to schema. RDDs are schema-less data structures. Thus, parallelizing a dataset, such as in this code snippet, is perfectly fine with Spark when using RDDs. So, we can mix almost anything that is a tuple, a dict, or a list and Spark will not complain. Once we collect the dataset, that is, run an action to bring it back to the driver. We can access the data in the object as we would normally do in Python. It will produce this output. The collect method returns all the elements of the RDD to the driver where it is serialized as a list. Now, let's see reading from files. When you read from a text file, each row from the file forms an element of an RDD. The data from file.take command will produce this output. To make it more readable, let's create a list of elements so each line is represented as a list of values. Now we will see lambda expressions. In this example, we will extract the useful information from the cryptic looking record of data from file. First, let's define the method with this code, which will parse the unreadable row into something that we can use. Next, we import the necessary modules. They are module, as we will use regular expressions to parse the record, and NumPy for ease of selecting multiple elements at once. Finally, we create a regex object to extract the information as specified, and parse the row through it. Once the record is parsed, we try to convert the list into a NumPy array and return it. If this fails, we return a list of default values, that is, 99, so we know this record did not parse properly. Now, we will use the extract information method to split and convert our dataset. Note that we pass only the method signature to map the method will hand over one element of the RDD to the extract information method at a time in each partition. Running data from file conv.take will produce this highlighted result. Now, let's see global versus local scope. One of the things that you, as a prospective PySpark user, need to get used to is the inherent parallelism of Spark. Even if you're proficient in Python 
Executing scripts in PySpark requires shifting your thinking a bit. Spark can be run in two modes, local and cluster. When you run Spark locally, your code might not differ to what you're currently used to with running Python. Changes would most likely be more syntactic than anything else, but with an added twist that data and code can be copied between separate worker processes. However, taking the same code and deploying it to a cluster might cause a lot of head scratching if you're not careful. This requires understanding how Spark executes a job on the cluster. In the cluster mode, when a job is submitted for execution, the job is sent to the driver node. The driver node creates a DAG for a job and decides which executor nodes will run specific tasks. The driver then instructs the workers to execute their tasks and return the results to the driver when done. Before that happens, however, the driver prepares each task's closure, a set of variables and methods present on the driver for the worker to execute its task on the RDD. This set of variables and methods is inherently static within the executor's context, that is, each executor gets a copy of the variables and methods from the driver. If, when running the task, the executor alters these variables or overwrites the methods, it does so without affecting either other executor's copies or the variables and methods of the driver. This might lead to some unexpected behavior and runtime bugs that can sometimes be really hard to track down. 